from when I began to where I am now, I'm a completely different person. I had a lot going on, a lot of anxiety and depression, and now my life's completely different. Well, the first thing that cooking does, and professional cooking, is it gives you structure. And that's exactly what people need. You know, when they've got a highly complex situation where they've lost everything, probably structure is the one thing that they're desperate for. Work is very important um, for all people. Everybody needs a function and a, a role in society. And the Beyond Food Apprenticeship gives people that opportunity who may not have had that opportunity before. We created a, a, a live restaurant, training people that have been homeless or have experienced homelessness to get back into meaningful employment and utilising the hospitality industry to do that. You can start at the bottom of the hospitality industry and you can reach the top actually quite quickly without huge amounts of qualifications. And so if you can imagine you've displaced, you've been homeless, you haven't worked for a long time, suddenly this, you get all of this support and, and training. Actually, it's a viable option for a lot of people. You know, you can come to work and focus on the job and for the eight hours or however long, you can forget your problem. And it's actually a very cathartic experience. I love every single day. It's day 390, whatever it is now, is um, exactly the same as day one. Beyond Food Foundation has become, I think, a real credible expert in the field of, of working pe with people that have lost this, you know, the thread of life, become displaced, become homeless. Well, through Breakthrough Kitchen, we've touched three and a half thousand people. Uh, Fresh Life, 1,300 and get stuck in with about 825. And out of the 825, we have employed 133 full-time apprentices here. I feel so privileged to be part of something. And I know that every apprentice feels like that. It's not just about cooking, it's, it's about becoming a better person. We all graduated at the same time and they did a graduation ceremony. It was a lovely way to round things off because everyone was there, they, they closed the restaurant off so it was just family and friends of all of us there. It was a joy, a real joy. And we then invited 12 people to become the new apprentices all on the same day. So you can imagine the celebration. And then a few days after that, the world decided to drop a pandemic on us. Yeah, coronavirus, my, my, my corona. It's a bummer, really, you know? I was very much like, okay, we're gonna have to close, we're gonna lose customers like that. So why don't we not do something remarkable? Let's cook our food, let's patch it up, let's label it, let's make it safe, and let's, let's get it somewhere where it'll be helpful. Second thing was, I wonder if there's other restaurants. We've got the team to go onto social media, get on the phones, and start to offer out this idea that they could bring their food to us, and then distribute that out um, to places like City Harvest, the hostels. Um, and we even delivered to uh, St. Thomas's down the road. And then it was kind of shut up shop. Our kitchen in particular is a place of training, a place of hope. Seeing our kitchen close is, um, is, is really a, you know, a very upsetting thing. Simon. Yeah, Simon. <laughs> He's not having it, <laughs> you know what I mean? He could have just been like, the restaurant's shut, I'm gonna take a breather, but he's now found another way to channel what he does. Although we were closing the restaurant, there was no way on earth that I was gonna close a charity down. Hi. Hello. 
Hi, my name is Gabby, James, Jess, and I'm part of Beyond Foods COVID-19 support line. We set up a support line. That support line is kind of responding in four ways. The first way and the most important way is with mental health. Second thing was about uh, financial hardship. People were going to get laid off really quickly. The third thing was about feeding people. Beyond Food and Brigade is all about food. And so we wanted to make sure that we had a system to firstly advise people what to eat and how to eat, but also where to get food if they were going to be in financial hardship. And then the fourth thing was about loneliness. A lot of our beneficiaries have been alone for a long time. They've kind of joined our family and the loss of that could have been detrimental. You could see the hospitality business in particular really not knowing when it was ever going to open again. And then it was as clear as day for me that we needed to kind of steer our work to be about looking to help other people in hospitality. I kind of got on the phone, I got on the emails, I got on social media, and I started to invite my friends from a kitchen to come together and give me a recipe, give me some images, and I'm going to produce a book. We're going to get 100 chefs into this book. Um, and through the social media of this book, we are getting this, the message out that we have to look after those people, those chefs, those waiters, those barmen, those people in the back office, the pot washers, um, that there is a system out there that we can support them with. I know it's a sort of a bad pun to use, but Simon's generosity is, is infectious. I mean, I know for a fact all the staff there are exactly the same and the apprentices are too, and that's why we're all doing our little bits as much as we can in a situation as it is at the moment. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. The coronavirus has got a, an infection to compete with, and it's, it's people like Simon Boyle and Beyond Food. So, yeah, good luck. <laughs> Homelessness is not going to decrease because of COVID-19. It's going to increase, so therefore our work is, is going to be needed even more. We will come back stronger and we will have learned an awful lot.